so it is absolutely pissing rain uh, it's pretty depressing so I think this is probably the right time to check out the more uh, depressing sites in Bratislava so we're going to check out the ugliest building in Europe and the mass grave holiday not that I'm affected by the rain I'm Irish I was born in the rain molded by the rain by the time I saw the sun I was already a man and by then it was blinding it's the world's shittest travel show Get your shit, it's time to go Get your fat ass off the floor And get outside the fucking door We're going to meet new faces See new places Make for pals Try, Try not, not to, to be accidentally, accidentally racist All of the equipment is shit, shit. The audio shit. shit The video shit. shit The general cinematography It's all shit So if you didn't know Now you know Tally ho Welcome to the world's shittest travel show And there she is And this wonky knockaboo is the Slovak radio building. It was uh, once voted one of the 30 ugliest buildings on earth. Ooh. While the Slovakians voted it the building of the century. Oh. So, you know, it just goes to show one man's upside down pyramid is another man's upside down pyramid. I don't know what the fuck the Soviets were up to, man. It's, uh, it's got a concert hall with apparently uh, one of Europe's biggest organs. But every fella says that, don't they? Except this time they're not lying. The organ actually has 6,000 pipes. That's more pipes than the Shank Hill Road on the 12th of July. What kind of shit were the Soviets at? Upside down pyramids, are you having a laugh? Uh, looks like it's closed. So I guess we probably shouldn't go in. I don't know. Anybody speak Slovak? It's a it's a telling contrast. We're up under this uh, we're up under this essentially Soviet monument to communism, and it's all uh, locked up and run down and shit. But across the way, you have the Bank of Slovakia, looking all shiny and shit. I think capitalism won. History time. April 1945. Adolf Hitler's getting saucy and he's in a mood. Meanwhile, the Red Army are on the sauce and are on the move, sucking up every potato and bottle of vodka in Eastern Europe. And on the 4th of April, the Red Army, represented by the Ukrainian 2nd and 5th Front, are knocking on Bratislava's door. And this shit got saucy then, boy. If I was a Nazi, I'd be fucking shitting myself right about now. Remember back when Russia saved us from the Nazis Everybody forgets Russia saved us from the Nazis With the Yanks and the Brits, Russia saved us from the Nazis And I know they were pricks, but they saved us from the Nazis You can talk all the shit you want about Soviet radio buildings But the lads know how to make a memorial Slavin Memorial, there's almost 7,000 bodies of Red Army soldiers buried under this mound uh, who died fighting fascism and liberating Bratislava. Stole the ball! Now whether they actually liberated Bratislava or not is, uh, is not for me to say. They most definitely fucking did not. Fascism went out, communism came in, everybody got fucking rode up the arse. Some things don't change. So in true Soviet fashion, it's a 50 meter high obelisk with a 12 meter statue on top. And uh, it's a Red Army soldier and he's stamping on a swastika. The Soviets were not subtle. They were not subtle. But uh, it's kind of moving. The guys who died may very well have believed in their cause. They were a contradictory bunch. Uh, obviously the communists were atheist, totally anti-religious, 
But um, in a lot of their imagery, they use a lot of kind of, uh, there's a religious vibe to it, you know what I mean? Like behind me here on the door, uh, you're kind of, it kind of reminds me of the stations at a cross. It's just like the flagellation of the red soldier. Uh, that's a weird one. What the fuck were the Soviets at? Putting propaganda on mass graves is back crack. If you've if you've ever been to to Berlin to uh, to Treptow Park, there's a very similar uh, memorial there. You know, they're very solemn places, very green, very quiet, always kept very clean. And uh, this place just has the most amazing view over the entire city of Bratislava. It'd be a great spot for a couple of cans. Come to Bratislava, have a couple of cans and learn all about man's inhumanity to man. And, uh, all along the side here in the, the black marble uh, are the names of every soldier uh, buried here. Now most of the, uh, it appears most of the names have kind of been wiped off by weathering or whatever, but I don't speak Russian, so... I'll be honest with you lads, I thought I was pretty hot shit hiking up here half an hour in the rain. Then you get here and you realize there's 7,000 dead lads who hiked all the way from across Russia and Ukraine in the rain. I'm going back to my hostel to change my socks. And these lads are lying in a cold, wet fucking mass grave. Rest easy lads, you won. But they didn't. Do you remember capitalism, do you? Capitalism won. Guess where we're going now? We're going to that thing over there. What the fuck is that? So it was originally, and I think officially supposed to be called, the Slovak National Uprising Bridge. But uh, because of the big wonky yoke on the top, people just call it the UFO Bridge. Yeah, the, uh, the chick at reception was like, don't worry, there's a, there's an elevator to the top. I was like, you don't think I'm going to fucking climb up the side of it, do you? I'll be honest, lads, it's, <laughs> it's a pretty fucking terrifying elevator. Jesus Christ. Can't lie, lads. It is. Uh, it's a fucking windy one. The wind would blow the milk out of your tea up in this place. The UFO tower, and uh, behind me is Petrozalka, uh, known affectionately, apparently, as the Bronx of Bratislava, uh, due to it being a, uh, I guess, kind of rough as fuck. Um, got the highest suicide rate in the country, which sounds nice. So if, uh, if I do get blown over the side and they find my body mashed into the ground, uh, it wasn't a suicide, it was accidental, I was blown off. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's head over and see how the commies used to live. So, welcome to Petrozalka, home to 130,000 people. It's um, an old communist built um, suburb just south of uh, the old town. These used to all be grey and uh, after the fall of uh, communism in the area in 1989, uh, someone had the great idea to paint them. Really kind of subtle, nuanced colours. Every block kind of seems to have its own theme. Pretty beautiful. Grata, grab your balaclava Me around the back of my gap from Bratislava The Soviets saved us from the Nazis Nice! But who's gonna save us from the Soviets? Shite! This used to be a completely separate village uh, from Bratislava and uh, it was annexed 
by the Nazis uh, during the Second World War. Bye, crack. And a lot of bad shit went down here. Bye, crack. Uh, Hungarian nationals and Bye, crack. other undesirables were Bye, uh, crack. pretty much kept here Bye, crack. in labour camps and shit like that. Bye, crack. It's a pretty cool vibe now. Bye, crack. Physically, at least, it seems to have a kind of bit of a rough vibe, but that is not the case at all. Somebody even smiled at me a minute ago. I think they were smiling. Could have been a grimace. Petr Zhalka, twinned with Pyongyang. So this style of apartment block is called a panelak. There's 130,000 people living in these panelaks. Uh, at one stage, up to a third of uh, the citizens of Bratislava uh, were living in Panalax. They're just kind of substandard concrete, not too, you know, not too well built. So in true communist style, all of these buildings were originally grey, to match the sky, I guess. I shudder to think what it was like here before they did the paint job. So here you can see the difference between like the painted ones and I guess this is what they looked like before the paint job. Yeah, pretty grim. If you're unconvinced about the power of a paint job, check out the buildings behind me. And check out the unpainted ones behind me here. No, that is grim. Listen, but I'm all about the liberty, egalitate, fraternity I'm down for all my comrades and I always work on Saturdays And I'm not trying to go against the government or disobey My heart is weighing heavy and there's something that I have to say Comrade, you can tell me anything, everything I'll never tell another soul, I promise you I never will Are you going underground or moving abroad? Tell me, are you having counter-revolutionary thoughts? I wanna paint my panelac I wanna paint my panelac, wanna paint my panelac Cause I'm not happy in my habitat Living these grey lives under grey skies I ain't having that Man, I wanna paint my panelac I wanna paint my panelac, wanna paint my panelac Man, my gaff looks like Stalingrad So I wanna paint my panelac, I wanna paint my panelac Check out the monstrosity over here If there was ever a building in need of a visit from Al-Qaeda it's probably this one. Can I get an order of 14 Saudi Arabians, please? And here we have the world's saddest playground. Oh, Matt, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? As for Petr Zhalka being the most densely populated area in Central Europe, I don't know, man. I've bumped into about 10 people so far. I don't know where they're hiding. I have some theories. So what was the point of these buildings? Well, the Soviets wanted to foster a, uh, an egalitarian feeling amongst the people. We're all in it together. Kind of like a, let's all share the misery, yeah? Hello. It's the world's shittest travel show. It's the world's shittest travel show. World's shittest travel show. If you didn't know, now you know. If you wanna subscribe, you'll be notified of new videos.